Go inside the Crimson Tide. Tighter Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Carrie Harris. It's an annual tradition for Nick Saban, his Nick's Kids Golf Tournament. It happened last week at Old Overton Golf Club in Vestavia. As usual, golf wasn't the only thing on Nick Saban's mind, although he did have a good time and all the players did as well, and it's a great cause for his Nick's Kids Fund. Good evening, everybody, and welcome in to Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock, alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm Gary Harris. Well, it's that time of the year, Rodney, and we are going to be talking football recruiting in a little bit, but first, of course, we're going to pop the can on a Pepsi next. Brought to us by Buffalo Rock. Love that sound. All the great Pepsi taste. Two-thirds less sugar than regular Pepsi. Only 60 calories per 12-ounce can. So you get all that great Pepsi flavor. Two-thirds less sugar. You can't beat that. Pick up some the next time you're at your local grocer. Well, Ronnie, as I said, it's that time of the year. We start looking forward to the start of football season. Nick Saban got plenty of questions about his football team and some pressing issues in the college game right now at his golf tournament last week. One of them, satellite camps. Last week, Michigan's Jim Harbaugh was a guest instructor at the Prattville camp. The good news, they raised a lot of money for brain tumor research. So kudos to Jim Harbaugh for that. Although, Coach, keep your shirt on, please, next time. <laughs> Nick Saban was asked about this recent trend, which he says goes against the point of having camps on campus to begin with. Yeah, I think if you're going to have camps, you should have them on your campus. And if guys are interested in uh, your school, they should come to your camp. Uh, but. You know, if other people are going to be allowed to do this, we're going to do the best job that we can to strategically plan, you know, some areas and some situations where uh, we can have camps and uh, it'll benefit the kids relative to the kind of camps that we have. Coach Saban was also asked about the status of two injured players. Freshman running back Bo Scarborough of Tuscaloosa and wide receiver Cam Sims of Monroe, Louisiana are both coming back from Injury, knee surgeries, in fact. Saban says both are doing well in rehab, but they won't rush either back to the field. Scarborough, though, is a little ahead of Sims. His injury not quite as severe, and there's a thought process that we might see both Scarborough on the field sometime in 2015 with Cam Sims. Probably not. Well, this is a big week for several Crimson Tide baseball players and signees, Rodney. The time has come for the annual Major League Baseball Amateur Draft. It started on Monday. Players were selected by Major League teams. Alabama saw two current players and actually three now as we had another one get drafted just a little while ago. Plus a signee get drafted. Mikey White was picked by the Oakland Athletics in the second round, 63rd overall. White joins a list of 11 Tide players to be drafted in the first or second round. Casey Houston was selected in the third round, 96th overall by the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's the second highest selection by an outfielder in Crimson Tide history. And just a short time ago, pitcher Taylor Gilbo, a left-handed pitcher for Alabama, was taken in the 10th round by the Washington Nationals. And Alabama signee Mike Nickerak, a pitcher from Pennsylvania, was selected 27th overall by the Rockies. All indications are that he's going to sign. I mean, he's looking at a signing vote that's right under 200 uh, Two million dollars, I should wow. say, Rod. Right about 1.9 million, and he throws a 97 mile per hour fastball. So <laughs> that'll get you a lot of money from from the big leagues. But we'll see. He has already signed with Alabama in case he doesn't sign a professional contract. Well, we're getting into the summer camp season, and first year Alabama basketball coach Avery Johnson is holding several sessions at Coleman Coliseum this summer. The first one is an individual camp, which will begin on Sunday, June 14th, and run through Wednesday, June 17th. Johnson will hold. One day team camps on June 19th, 20th, 23rd, and 24th. The purpose of the Avery Johnson basketball camp is to teach the fundamentals of basketball while also stressing the importance of hard work, a positive attitude, and sportsmanship. I'm excited about meeting all their parents. I'm excited about exposing all of the parents and uh, the, the campers to my coaching staff, our past players, current players. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of dribbling and passing and shooting and learning how to play the game of basketball, learning the fundamentals of it, with us all eating together. And uh, it's just gonna be one big happy family and one big party playing the game of basketball. Big party, how about that, Rod? <laughs> hey, listen, it's not too late to get involved in the Avery Johnson basketball camps uh, from 
more information on how you can be a part of it, individual or team, call that number there on your screen, 205-348-4111. It's going to be a lot of fun, that's for sure. Well, more to come on TIPV. We're going to get right involved here in the next segment because we're going to be talking recruiting. It was a huge week for the Crimson Tide football program. When we come back, Rodney and I will break down all the new commitments and what they mean for the Crimson Tide in terms of the future. Plus, coming up, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. As always, you can reach us at 205-348-WBUA. That's 348-9882. Email us, TITV at WBUATV.com, or reach us on Twitter using the hashtag TV. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV. We'll return right after this. Well, you know, it never hurts to get a commitment from one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the country. That's exactly what happened to Alabama on Friday night when Jalen Hurts, out of the football proud state of Texas, committed to the Tide over the Aggies and many others. Jalen, one of just several commitments over the past couple of weeks for Alabama. Rodney, let's start with the quarterback. Jalen Hurts. I mean, the quarterback is the most scrutinized position in college football, probably the most difficult to recruit successfully. But this is a guy that, uh, you know, we're, we're in an era of the dual threat quarterback. Jalen Hurts is certainly one of those. Well, you showed him there running, Gary, and he's certainly a very talented runner. But, you know, to be honest with you, I think Jalen Hurts is a passer first. He certainly looks to pass, you know, first and foremost. He's a guy that threw for over 2,500 yards, 21 touchdowns last year at Channel View, Texas. He plays for his father there, so he's a coach's son. You know, usually coaches' sons, they're, they're really, uh, you know, make really good decisions because they've been exposed to the game for so long, Gary, and he does that. I mean, he's a very mature guy. His dad's a no-nonsense guy. Jalen was raised that way, and I really like Jalen Hurts. I mean, look at him. He's, he's very athletic. He can do a lot of things, but again, I think he's an outstanding passer as well. All right, Alabama will lose Coker after this year. There's a chance that another quarterback or two may not be back next year. With Hurts in the fold, does Alabama take another quarterback this year, you think? Well, you know, there's been some talk over the last month that they might take two quarterbacks if they get the right two or, or if they could do that. And, and, you know, Juwan Pass out of Columbus, Georgia, is a guy that's visited this week, and he is a very talented kid in his own right. Some people think he's right up there with the best in the country. And, you know, they would take uh, possibly both of them. That would be an interesting scenario. I, I, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen with two highly regarded guys, Barry, but it might. All right, you saw the size, good size, height, weight on Jalen Hurts, and uh, his dad's his high school coach, so that tells you right there he understands the uh, intricacies of playing the position and, and sees it from a coach's perspective, so that's a, a big deal right there. All right, Alabama picked up a, a defensive player on Monday, yesterday, Jaquan Uly of Virginia, Chesapeake, Virginia, picked Alabama. This is a big, powerful inside linebacker. Here's the signing ceremony to school. And he has his uh, boys there backing him up. you got to like that with all the Alabama T-shirts. But maybe a little short, 6 feet, 6 one, but about 250 pounds. You know, a downhill, powerful tackler. Uh, talk about Uli and, and, and what he brings to the uh, table for Alabama on defense. Everybody in that area really speaks highly of him. I'm, I'm talking about high school coaches that have competed against him. They, they say he's a terror on the field. You know, he's really physical. There you see him there. And, uh, you know, Gary, he's got a, a mean streak about him. And uh, I think he's a really good player. I think when you look at Jay, uh, Jaquan Uli, the one thing about him is he had a lot of scholarship offers, had a lot of opportunities. And, uh, you know, if he can get his academic situation squared away, which uh, he says he will, then you know he's got a chance to be a really good player. Yeah, got a little work to do in the classroom. There's a look at the numbers on you, Lee. 239, he might be closer to, to 250 as we, as we speak, but you see a good offer list. Virginia Tech, Florida State, North Carolina, among others. And again, Alabama showing that its footprint goes all over the country. They can go anywhere and recruit. Well, Jalen Hurts, the quarterback commitment's gonna need some big guys to block for him. And Alabama got a uh, commitment from a guy who may or may not be around by the time Jalen gets under center. Junior college offensive lineman Charles Baldwin. Rodney, everything I've been able to find out about this guy, the word on him is that he's a monster. Arguably not just the top junior college lineman in the country out of ASA College in Brooklyn, New York, but arguably the top junior college player, period. I mean, this guy looks like he is SEC ready right now, Rod. About 300 pounds, 
I hear his body fat's in the 9 or 10 percent range, 6'5". I mean, he looks like a guy that could step in and start for you right away. Yes, he could, Gary. When, and I think that's the expectation. A guy that could play right tackle, could play left tackle. He's from ASA College in Brooklyn, New York. Same school that produced Leon Brown here to Alabama. And, you know, Gary, he's a, he's a physical player. He's an athletic player. There you see him. He moves really well. And, again, I think the, the fact that he can play, has that versatility to play either tackle spot is, is really big. You know, I, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, why does Alabama sign junior college players when they get the best high school players in the country? Well, junior college players sometimes are just as talented as high school guys. They're a little more advanced, and they're usually more capable of stepping in and playing right away. And obviously, when you take a junior college guy, you're usually looking for a guy that can step in and get on the field right well, off the bat. Well, you remember 2008, well, 2009, actually, right after Andre Smith left, Alabama had a gaping hole at left tackle, and James Carpenter stepped right in out of junior college and did an outstanding job for two years, helped Alabama win a national championship. You know, if, if James Carpenter would not have been there, you know, maybe Alabama would have had a more difficult time or might not have won the national championship, but he did an outstanding job now in the NFL star. So you're right, Gary, junior college players can play a prominent role. There you see the numbers on big Charles Baldwin. What a physical specimen this guy is. Well, the class for 2016 is shaping up to be one of the best in the country, as usual for Alabama. But 2017, the Tide's already got a big jump on that class as well. The latest commitment, another lineman, Alex Leatherwood from Pensacola, Florida, Booker T. Washington High School. Another one of these, these offensive linemen that, that streamlined about 300 pounds, but he carries it well. Now, remember, folks, he's only going to be a junior in high school, right. but uh, another really good-looking prospect, although he hasn't been rated by a lot of the services yet. And from what I understand, Gary, most of those services think he's going to be a five-star type player. I mean, a really talented kid. And, you know, Alabama, you look at the 2016, 2017 classes and, and last year and the last couple of years, I mean, what they've done on the offensive line, you have to give, you know, the, the staff certainly a lot of credit. Obviously, it starts with Nick Saban, but Mario Cristobal has done an outstanding job of really finding talent. Gary and, and, and the staff has done a really good job of securing you know, commitments from top players, signing top players. So I think the offensive line, when you look at it, it's really, uh, you know, once again going to be an outstanding area of this recruiting class. And I think the defensive line has a chance to be uh, quite good as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, still much more to come on this edition of Tider Insider TV. When we return, we'll give you a peek at the progress on Sewell Thomas Stadium. And next, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the information on the screen on how you can get in touch with us, including giving us a call directly at 205-348-9882. We'll be right back with more Tider Insider TV. Stay with us. He couldn't hide his enthusiasm, and I, I can't say that I blame him. Mitch Gaspar, the Alabama baseball coach, tweeted out this picture of the prog progress over at Sewell Thomas Stadium last week, and it is coming along nicely. I'll tell you what, Alabama's needed a new baseball park for a long time. The new Sewell Thomas Stadium is going to be on par with any facility in the country. Can't wait to uh, to see it when it's finished. It's looking good now, as you can tell. All right, let's straight head uh, straight to the phone lines right here. They're lined up for us tonight. Some of our regular callers, including our buddy John over in Bessemer. John, what you got tonight? Gary, what's going on, man? Uh, you you know it. You're the man. Hey, man, the, the, the quarterback talk about going to Alabama, man. That's what we need. We, we, we need some running backs and quarterbacks, man. Well, John, we, we, we need them all yeah, to go to Alabama and well, you're, win games. Yeah, you're Later. right. You know, they're, they're recruiting great. But, Rodney, is, you know, we talked a lot about quarterbacks. We mentioned running backs. And I know people said just a couple of years ago, what are they going to do with all these running backs? Now you look up, you, you can't have enough big-time yeah. running backs in this conference. I mean, they signed four in that class with Derrick Henry. You're talking about Alvin Kamara, Alti, Tenpenny, and uh, Tyron Jones, three of those four that I just mentioned, gone already. So certainly, you know, in this class, I think you always need to find running backs, especially with Alabama's offense. And I think, Gary, they're going to they're going to get some good running backs. It's just a matter of which ones. All right, let's go to Hayden and talk to Ricky. Ricky, how are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you? Very well, thanks. What you got for us? My question is Grant Hill. Can you tell us an update on Grant Hill, whether he's still on the team or on the roster, or will he be coming back or what? Right, Ricky. Great question. And, uh, you know, at this point, and, I, and I'll defer to Rodney because I don't have an update for you. Uh, I, I don't really know what his status is at the moment. Um, he's still a part of the program, but as far as when he'll be back or, or if he'll yep. be back, I can't tell you with 100% certainty either way. Yep. Well, there hasn't been anything official, so we certainly couldn't address it because there's not been anything coming from the university or coming from Coach Saban. But, you know, at this time, I would say it's probably doubtful 
that he'll be back. That's kind of the word right now. But, you know, you never know. These things do change. So we'll kind of wait and see what happens with the official announcement or if one comes. Yeah, Ricky, we'll monitor it. And if we get any news on, on Grant Hill officially, we'll pass it along uh, here on TITV and also on our sportscast. All right, let's go to Aniston where our good buddy Harold is standing by. Harold, what's going on, man? Roll tag, guys. I hear you, bro. Hey, uh, I hear all these prognosticators, man, talking about Alabama won't be top ten. You know, it's just the way I like it, guys. I like us to be an underdog and everybody count us out because when we kick them, man, it's going to be so sweet. <laughs> well, Harold, you know, it's hard for Alabama under Nick Saban to be an underdog. Let, let, let's just be honest. So I think it's a stretch to call the Tide an underdog. But will they be picked to win the SEC West? I don't know. You know, when we go to media days, I think there's a good chance Auburn is going to be the pick. So uh, I do think that it might be sweet for Alabama to, to be able to play the underdog card a little bit after having, you know, everybody shooting for you every year. And they're still going to shoot yeah. for Alabama, but it might be something that's a positive if they're not picked to win it. Yeah, I think so. But again, it, you know, Harold, those things, those underdogs and all those predictions, they, they started to change as the season starts to move along. And all of a sudden you might have been the underdog and three, four, five, five weeks in. You know, you've got the target on your back. Alabama always has the target yeah. on his back. You mentioned that, Gary. And I, you know, but but I do think uh, you know Auburn's kind of getting a lot of the praise right now as maybe the number one team in the country by some. Yeah, we'll see. Of course, one thing when they get on that field on Saturdays, I tell you, nobody's thinking about who's number one or who's number five or any of that. They're just out there playing. All right, stay with us. More to come on TIF TITV. Easy for me to say. I've only said it about a billion times in my life. Next, we'll introduce you to the final piece of Avery Johnson's coaching staff from an unlikely source and more phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, give us a call. We'd love to get you on. We're monitoring Twitter, monitoring emails as well. So uh, want to hear from you when we come back with more right after this timeout. You heard from Avery Johnson earlier, and the Alabama men's basketball coach completed his coaching staff last week. It was announced that AAU coaching legend Scott Pospickel has been hired. Pops Pospickel has been at the helm of the Texas Titans, which has produced several NBA stars and also produced several college players, including Avery Johnson's son, Avery Jr., who will be heading to Tuscaloosa to play for his dad with the Crimson Tide. So uh, here's the resume for Scott Pospickel. Texas Titans AAU, as we said, he's built quite a reputation, but he's also coached at the uh, college level as well, and he was a college player as well, Florida Southern, and uh, will certainly open up recruiting doors for Alabama, but also is a experienced on the court coach and known as a great communicator as well, specializing in the offensive part of the game. All right, let's head right back to the phone lines, and uh, Jerry is with us in Holly Pond. Hey, Jerry, how are you? Oh, doing fine. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yeah, I want to congratulate Coach Murphy on her softball season, but I believe he needs to consider bringing in a new hitting coach to help the girls with their hitting because we had the defense, we had the pitching, but we didn't hit the ball like we should have. Well, Jerry, I, I do think the power numbers were down this year. I'll agree with you on that. But, I, I mean, Alabama's got a proven track record of, of turning out uh, great hitting ball clubs. So I'm going to disagree with you a little bit. I think this coaching staff that Alabama has, uh, whether it be in terms of pitching, recruiting, hitting, defensive play, uh, I think they're outstanding. They enjoy working together, been together for a long time. And I think that coaching staff's just fine. Yeah, I would agree with that, Gary. Sometimes it's the hitters. You know, it's not necessarily what you're teaching or, or who's teaching them, but sometimes it's just the hitters don't come through, and I think that's kind of what happened this year. And, you know, I certainly think, as Gary said, the track record is there, and uh, I think that Coach Murphy will – He'll have some hitters. And let me tell you this, too, Jerry, if it makes you feel any better, Coach Murphy works a lot with the hitters. <laughs> he, does, he does a lot of that coaching. He and Coach Habits both. Of course, Coach Van Brakel handles the pitchers. But uh, he is a, a lot uh, of, of the coaching in terms of the hitting is done by Coach Murphy. But uh, good call. Nice comments and questions. All right, let's stay here in Tuscaloosa and talk to CB. CB, what's up? Don't know it, man. How y'all tonight? Look, uh, I hear a lot about the defense. If we're going to have a good pass rush, boy, we need one. But tell me about the offense. 
What's up there? Let's tell me something. <laughs> well, CB, I mean, again, we've talked about it ad nauseum on this show. They gotta, they gotta find out who the quarterback's gonna be. They'll do that in the fall. I think around that player, Rod, there's a lot of talent. I think the offensive line is gonna be good. A lot of different playmakers at receiver, unproven, but some guys that can go get it. I think Derrick Henry's in beast mode. I've said for the record, Kenyon Drake, I think, is a, is a, a guy who's just a, a, an ace in the hole. You can do all kinds of things with him. O.J. Howard at tight end. This should be a productive offense. Well, I think it certainly has a chance to CB, but you're talking about an an offense right now that really that's the big question mark because we don't know you've got so many new starters you're going to have I think nine and you know you're talking about three new offensive linemen a new quarterback uh, you're talking about all new receivers um, so at this point I mean there are some questions you've got some depth possible issues at running back but you know Gary there's a like you said there is a lot of talent I think the offensive line does have a chance to be really good I think they can be a good run blocking team I think they can be really strong in that area if they can find a quarterback that can manage things and uh you know, get on the same page with the receivers. They do have a chance to be very good. All right, let's go to Twitter for our next question from uh, Macy Dale Wedgworth wants to know, what do you think about Auburn being ranked above Alabama like ESPN has it? Well, let me say this. Uh, again, we've talked about this a little bit. Auburn's a good team, and I think they're getting a big bump from from bringing in Will Muschamp. I think the feeling is that last year offensively they were good enough, the defensive numbers. Now, whether that's right or wrong, that's the perception. So I think they're giving – you know, these pundits are giving Will Muschamp a lot of credit, but I got no problem with it. Again, I, I, you know, as long as you're in that top ten somewhere, you don't have to go far to make your move to, to if you win games, to be in position to get in the playoff, and Alabama's going to be in the top ten. Well, I've got no problem with however they want to rate them right now. It really doesn't matter. Now, when you do look at Auburn, though, in honesty, you know, they probably should have a good offense, but when you look at it defensively, they're probably going to play seven true freshmen in, the, in their, um, you know, their top two units. So, They've got a lot of question marks defensively. Now, Will Muschamp may bring some enthusiasm, but, you know, he needs some players. Yeah, like I said, they're getting a big bump for hiring an assistant football coach, and um, we'll see how it plays out. All right, stay with us. Still more to come here on TITV. When we come back, Alabama football players in the news for something they've done off the field. And don't worry, it's a positive. That's next on TITV when we come back on a pretty night here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Great to see this. Leaders of the Alabama football team doing things in the community. Nick Saban had to love this. O.J. Howard, Reggie Ragland visiting veterans at the Tuscaloosa VA Medical Center and put a smile on, on those guys' faces and, and, and ladies, too. Just great to, uh, to see that. All right, that is going to do it for the program for this week. Thanks to all the people that make this program possible. Of course, Rodney Orr among them, B.J. Milliken, Katarina Montero, James Rossi and others. If you missed the show, you can catch the replay tonight at 1030 or you can catch it on our website, WVUATV.com. That's it for Tider Insider. Have a good evening, everybody. I'm Gary Harris. Good night.